Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Cisco. And this is Mike. And welcome to Cisco and I'm Mike. Today's guest, he's a space engineer. He works for NASA, and he has some cool projects that he's worked on. We have Elio Murillo in the house today. Hey, welcome. Elio, welcome. welcome. Hey, thank thanks you for coming out. Thanks for having out. me. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Hey, thanks for appreciating it. I know it's Sunday, and it's a little inconvenient for a lot of people, but we really appreciate <laughs> it. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. So what, how do I do this? Do I look at the cameras or I look yeah, at you? Right here. What you do you look at us? I mean. Normal conversation. <laughs> yeah, normal normal right. conversation, yeah. Um, yeah, so Elio Morillo, I have been working at NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory for the last six years or so. I was born in Ecuador. I grew up in Puerto Rico, went to high school in New York City, uh, did my undergrad and master's degree at the University of Michigan, and work brought me to L.A., so I've been here for the past six years. Nice. Mm, nice. That's quite a bit of traveling, though. Yep. A lot of places that people want to go to and visit. Yep. So, yeah. <laughs> I've so lived what, where you've probably vacationed. <laughs> exactly. Right. Pretty much. So work actually brought you to California then, working for NASA directly? That's right. Oh, yep. nice. And you've had a chance to work on the Mars project. That's one of your biggest things recently, correct? Yeah, that's right. I worked on the Mars. I have been working, still am, on the Mars 2020 rover and helicopter. So NASA has been on Mars since the 1970s, in some way or another. Uh, and I have been a part of this last mission, which is the first leg of a Mars sample return mission. So we'll be collecting samples. That's kind of the, the main thing this robot is doing there, is collecting samples that could potentially have evidence of ancient life on Mars. And the next leg of that mission, another robotic system, is gonna go collect those samples, launch them back, and the whole thing is going to bring it back to Earth, which is going to be wild. I thought I thought they had already done that. I thought that they had already identified uh, that there was life in. in, in it's just nope. based on like the, the like the dirt, right? They're just using tests as that. Well, yeah, that's that's what I thought because this is not the first rover, right? This is not the first rover. So you're 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 thinking along the the right lines. So over the years, every mission, if you want to put it this way, every mission has put contributed a little bit to the story mm -hmm. um and i can talk about both the landers and the rovers there's different type of spacecraft that we launch and also the orbiters and now we have helicopters so there's four types so let me give you the quick background you got the orbiters think of your satellites that go around earth well we have a few of those on mars and over the last several decades there's been many there's been many attempts the united states has had more success than other countries but right now we have the u.s uh, the Chinese, the United Arab Emirates, uh, Japanese are planning to get there, the European Space Agency, um, and over the years we had Soviets and Russians and ESA, the European Space Agency, and other folks, and there's been a lot of successes, but most of those have actually failed. Um, and then on the surface, we've had landers and we've had rovers. The difference being landers are these platforms, just kind of get there, don't have wheels. Kind of like the ones on, like, like when they land on the moon, when it just sits yep, there? exactly, and they stay gotcha. there. They, they land and they stay there. And then since 1997, we tested out a little rover, started with it's about the size of a microwave, Sojourner, which is named after a uh, abolitionist, a uh, freedom fighter, um, amazing story, and it's amazing that we honored her with, with the name, uh, well-deserving, beyond deserving. And the rover was just a test to see if we could even operate a rover on Mars, because you gotta you gotta realize the following, right? Mars is really far away. Depending where Mars is on orbit around the sun compared to Earth, your signal can go can take between six to twenty minutes one way. All right? Mm. It's not like you have an RC, right? An yeah, RC yeah. Can, an RC car here that you just tell it go forward, it moves forward. No, no, it's like moves forward is it six delay? minutes later, then it does its thing, right? Mm. And there's lag. Um, and similarly, when you hear back, right, so there's this lag. And not only is there lag, but you don't actually constantly hear back from the rover because depending how the it's pointing. Could get lost. Um, wait, sorry? You're saying because of the signal could get lost. Then, well, it's right? not necessarily the signal can get lost as much as you don't always have direct line of sight with the rover, right? Because uh -huh. it's the planet's rotating, our planet is rotating. It only ever truly communicates with Earth when we have one of these orbiters I'm talking about pass over it. So then the signal on the rover gets sent to that orbiter, and then from that orbiter, you get that data back to Earth. 
So you can start thinking about like, oh, we're not, we don't actually hear from this thing all day, every day. You have to plan about when can you actually send commands to the asset on the surface. Planning around when do you hear back? Because remember, there, there's no one on the surface of Mars. So this thing has to, whatever it does, it's doing it by itself. Gotcha. So you really want to make sure you don't drive off a cliff or that you <laughs> drive into sand and you get stuck or that you drive over a rock that's large enough that tips you over. So you have to really be meth super methodical um, and integrate autonomy. So these, these things do most of their robotics on completely autonomously and, and, and think about how that is done. So we tried that for the first time in 1997 with Sojourner. Then we saw, okay, things, things worked pretty well in that little mission supposed to last just 90 souls. After that, we sent Mars Exploration Rovers. Big golf carts. Probably, I don't know if you remember these. It was um, Opportunity, Spirit and Opportunity. So these were two rovers that, remember, this, the first one, do rovers even work at all? That was her question. Then we stepped it up, and these golf cart-sized rovers like actually have science instruments on top of them. And the idea is to try and understand whether there was anything that could support life at all. And, and with those rovers in particular, it was like, was there ever water on Mars, right? Because here on Earth, we know that where there's water, there's life. Mm -hmm. So with that knowledge that we have built here, we want to use those same like tests, those science experiments, if you will, to understand if on another planet where there may have been water, did life evolve like it did here? And short answer is, if you today, Go to any of the rivers, anywhere here, anywhere, anywhere. Pick up a rock and, and do this with your kids. Bring a hammer with you, a little hammer. Grab this rock, break it in half, all right? More than likely, that little rock, you're going to see it has layers, 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 layers. That's because over thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of years as there's been water flowing, all that river is doing is bringing materials over time from upstream, right? It brings the materials and over time it's enough materials that you start compacting. And ultimately you get that rock that you have in your hand, right? And then you're like, oh man, there's history here. You can learn about what happened in this river over time because this rock is telling me that story. We found rocks like that with um, both spirit and opportunity. And we confirmed, okay, there was once a wet surface and a wet subsurface. So there was not only water on the surface of Mars, but also underneath. So, okay, there, there's water here. There was water at some point. Maybe there could have been life. Then those little missions were supposed to only work for 90 days, all right? Spirit ended up working, I think, six years, Earth years. <laughs> and uh, Opportunity, Oppie, lasted until 2018. So here in LA, by the way, and I invite you to do this, the LA Astronomical Society and other amateur astronomers, they set up what they call star parties. So you could go to any of these observatories or any of these sites completely free, and amateur astronomers just bring out their telescopes. And you can see the different planets. Depending when they organize these things, you can see certain planets in the sky. Um, and back in 2018, I went to one of my first star parties, and typically Mars is very detailed. All right, like typically you can see Mars is like different hues of red, orange. You can see that obviously there's like mountains and craters and whatever. But back in 2018, it was an orange blob, like just a solid <laughs> orange blob. And it's because it had a planetary dust storm. So what happens to the rover then? It gets covered in dust. The solar panels can't charge the battery. Battery freezes. Rover dies. So that rover ended up lasting way more than intended, but... R.I.P. R.I.P. Oppie. Uh, that was it for Oppie. Let me go back a little bit here. In 2012, we landed a van-sized Curiosity rover, the Mars Science Laboratory. That rover, massive, has its own radio isotope thermal generator. So it has its own nuclear reactor. Doesn't care if there's a dust storm because it doesn't need solar panels. It doesn't have them. It can operate, no problem. That rover had a lab on board, a series of instruments that helped us confirm organic material on Mars. Okay, so not only is there organic material, but also the environment on Mars was habitable. At some point in time, 
the conditions were right for life to form there, like it formed here on Earth. But just because we found organic material, it doesn't mean that, that is due to a little bacteria taking a shit or because there was some kind of little green people living there. No, 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 no. Organic material is a result of geological processes. So if you have certain type of rocks over time, scratch off each other, whatever, you have organics. Like that just happens and nature happens here on Earth, happens everywhere. So now the question is, is the organic material that we're finding, <laughs> can we figure out if it's just geological or is it a result of ancient life? And don't get too excited. If there was ever life on Mars, it's just little bacteria, a little... All the conspiracy people right very, now like... <laughs> very, very simple. The energy on Mars and, and, and the kind of uh, metabolism that could have developed there would have never been anything like Earth. But if there was anything, there was water, there was an atmosphere, um, there were temperature, the right conditions, it was probably very simple, very very much like what we have bacteria. So, so you're saying it wouldn't... You're not gonna find the civilizations. No, you're not gonna absolutely find not. Dinosaurs. You're not gonna not find zero chance that. because okay. microorganisms, things like that. Because you never had enough oxygen there um, to support life as we once did here. So, if, by the way, something like a dinosaur, the reason they existed is because at some point in time in on Earth, there was way more oxygen than there is today. So you had these massive creatures that could actually breathe and live and exist, and over time. Our atmosphere changed and life forms just kind of became smaller to adapt, right? So separate topic, but on <laughs> Mars, um, the next question is, all right, let's figure out if this stuff there is a result of life. So now comes Perseverance, the rover I've been working on. Um, its primary objective is to collect samples, right? So we have some instruments on board on an area called, uh, we landed in an area called Jezero Crater. So the Jezero Crater, it's about when it had water flowing through it. It's about the size of Lake Tahoe. And it's like the Mississippi Delta. So if you look at just a, a map of Louisiana in that area, it's, it's, it's so evident how water has carved over the millions or thousands, I don't even know, thousands, hundreds of thousands of years, that entire area. And over time, similarly, in, in, in that area, you had different materials. And you can even see it. If you just take, take a quick look at the satellite image of the area, you have all these different colors, these different things that are happening all over the place. That also happened in this Jezero Crater area. It's, it's like you just look at it and it's like evidence. It's like, oh, yeah, water flowed here at some point. Um, so there's a lot of rich history there of different materials that were brought in by whatever water flowed there at some time. And we picked it because then with this rover, with Perseverance, now we're collecting different samples across the bottom of the uh, of this, this, this crater, as well as the walls of the crater, and we're moving on to different sites because there's just different types of materials that maybe have the answer if on Mars there was ever any kind of life. And that's the next part of the mission, early 2030. Um, another lander is going to get there. We're going to deliver the samples to the lander. That lander is going to have a rocket. That rocket is going to launch uh, basically a basketball filled with samples. And another spaceship is going to go collect those samples once the rocket puts them in orbit. The other spaceship is going to come from Earth, grab that basketball, bring it back to Earth. The whole thing is absolutely bananas, dude. It's wild. Nothing like that has ever been attempted. Um... And we're excited for it because maybe we'll know. And, and going back to your, your point, if we find any evidence of life that independently happened on Mars, then your imagination is the limit <laughs> as to what can happen outside, right? Because yeah. Yeah, it opens up the door. It's like if it happens on Mars, it happened on Earth, then Europa on Jupiter, which has an entire ocean map with way more water than Earth, what's under that ice? We don't yeah. know. So Jupiter has oceans? Yeah. Not Jupiter. The moons of Jupiter. Okay. Uh, Europa in particular. We're sending a mission there in 20, 2024, two years from now. Something like that. Um, where we know there's water there. There's just a 10-kilometer thick layer of ice because the external yeah. part of the planet is frozen up. But we know there's water there. The, all the math suggests it. 
And the reason it stays liquid is because as it's going around Jupiter, Jupiter's huge. Jupiter's gravity is enormous. So as this moon is just going around Jupiter, there's a constant pull and push because of the gravity. And that motion keeps the water in the interior liquid. There's enough warmth that it keeps it liquid. So there's a massive ocean there with way more water than any water that exists here on Earth. So it, again, if we find evidence of life on Mars, then open, open up the floodgates. Yeah, man. Mars is fucking crazy, dog. Like, Who I'm needs Bill Nye, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't Jupiter? And then I guess like, I have this question because I, I know a little bit about planets, but not so much. Jupiter is a gas planet, right? Right. So there's no mass. there's no rocky surface. Gotcha. So it's it just goes straight from gas to liquid. That's fucking um, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> So obviously, you know, you you can tell that you really love what you do. <laughs> sure. Like we just had a huge story, right? How how did you get into this field? What led you as a child, you know, or wanted to actually wanted to do this? Yeah, I mean that's a great question. I think uh see that poster you guys got there? Star oh. Wars, yeah. Um definitely played a huge role, right? I think uh growing up, it's just the, the this idea of exploring the stars um fascinated me. I think I didn't have cable or internet for a long time, so I relied on things like PBS. <laughs> uh, and, and and the wonderful thing about PBS is you got things like Nova. You got plenty of shows there that just, you know, tickle that curiosity. And they're really good at doing those kind of shows. And I watched them. I just constantly consumed those, those, those type of shows. And uh, I think video games definitely also... Uh, played into that a little bit. Things like Star Fox, um, definitely Star Wars. I didn't have any of this, by the way. I played it at my friend's house who had all these things. Um, but yeah, I think that, that that constant push of my imagination. And then at the same time, when I went to my, my, my friend's house, they had cable, so we would watch things like History Channel and Discovery Channel back when it wasn't just Pawn Stars. <laughs> um, when, when they were playing things like How It's Made, yeah. Um, lots of documentaries on things like the, just just the jet fighters of World War II. That kind of stuff just fascinated me. And it, it was very real that these were people that were building them. And I started just asking, like, how can I just be this person, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, well, what do I need to do to, to build my own jet fighter, my own spaceship, uh, my own technology to go do these things that look like Star Wars. Um, and slowly but surely, I started getting into science, math, arts. And I, 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 I like to highlight arts because it's such a huge part of engineering that I think a lot of people just take for granted because um, it requires a lot of creativity. No one in the world is doing Mars, right? So it's mm -hmm. like... Who, what kind of problems do you have? It's not just because it's in a textbook. Absolutely not. It's because you have to come up with these crazy solutions to solve on Mars, solve big problems on Mars. Um, and, and all of that fed, you know, also with the academic rigor of having a mother who's a teacher. Um, having less than an A was not an option. Dude, my Game Boy would be taken away for like a <laughs> month. Yeah, I feel you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's like there's no chance, no way that the – the son of a teacher is going to do bad at home um, or an academic in, uh, academics in school. So that, that eventually did, however, become my own drive. Um, there's only so much that she did. And then eventually it's like, oh, yeah, I just need to stay on top of it. Because, again, I grew up in single mother household, low income. We didn't have cars. We walked everywhere. We were supported our entire life by very generous people throughout all the different places that we lived. Um, and it was also at some point just evident that me going to school was going to be the way into the middle class and beyond. Um, and it's just a no-brainer that I had to do well in school and pick a career that would be economically fruitful as well. And when the economics and, and the passion for cool tech just lines up, you go to space. You, you get to do these really cool projects. And I think uh, that, that puts it in summary. There's a lot of details in between, but, but that's kind of how, how I got here. Nice. I think, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, no, I was going to say, you mentioned you watch a lot of shows that kind of uh, basically uh, fed into your 
into your uh, into your want and need of doing the space thing. Yeah. Um, and I was gonna say I, I watch the same things. I mean, obviously I don't I don't want to go to NASA or I don't want to go to the moon, but I am intrigued and interested. And like I watch Ancient Aliens. I don't know how. how <laughs> I know I know a lot of it has to do with like them hyping it up, For sure. but. Some of the shit they say, I mean, it's like, what the fuck? Like, it makes sense, you know what I mean? Especially when it comes to aliens. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm just, again, just hearing you talk about how long it takes for for some of these rovers to to, to work. Uh, you said 2030. I'm like, fuck, that's a long time, you know, planning, from man. now. But to you, you're like, I can't wait for that shit. And to me, it's like, damn, that's like six years or eight years from now. It's the behind it's, the scenes, though, the things yeah. that it takes, like you said, you know, we problem solving. That, so. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. so it, it's been fantastic, I think, very recently, too. NASA itself, you know, I'm speaking as a citizen. I'm not speaking for NASA, but how much work has been put into the outreach and just the visibility into the stories of us who are there working it and, 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 and developing because none of this is easy. Yeah. To get to Mars, it takes eight months. To get to Jupiter, uh, depending on the rocket, it takes six, seven years. It's just, These are missions that take, for Mars in particular... Our rover started getting planned immediately as the other one landed. So from 2012, we landed in 2021, started operations, and, and we're just going. These missions take a long time. Um, and and we for, for, for what they cost, it, it, it was a this rover, Perseverance and Ingenuity, the helicopter, uh, 2.5 billion, all right, which is, is it, it's nothing. It is, it is nothing for what it does um, and the amount of people and, and, and the amount of economy that's generated. Um, as a citizen, I wish more money get pushed to the side from defense and fed into things like NASA. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, the, this is the stuff that gets people's imaginations going. It creates hope. I, 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 you know, it was really important for us and for the country, and it was made very clear we launched this rocket in 2020 when everybody was in lockdown. And, like, we didn't stop the work. We had to make it happen. Otherwise, because you can only launch to Mars every 26 months, which is its own topic, um, we had to make it done. We had to like, have it happen. There, there yeah. was no option. It's like you have to launch July of 2020. And then we landed in, in February of 2021. And we knew, like, people were paying attention because everybody's, like, in the constant stress of the COVID-19 pandemic. And it's like, this gives people a glimmer of hope that things are still happening. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the world hasn't stopped. <laughs> and, and that's something I like to highlight too. It's like, pandemic or not, at the end of the day, the universe does not care what happens on Earth. Yeah. Um, we have these 26-month constraints. It's like... What, why is that? Why? Why are you? Why would you have to wait twenty six months? Because our rockets can only put us in the correct orbit um, when Earth and Mars are close to each other. And like, it takes just to give you an idea. Here, it take it, Earth takes three hundred and sixty five days and a little more to go around the sun. It takes about I think six hundred and eighty seven Earth days for Mars to go around the sun. So it takes a bit. It takes double, a little double of for Mars to go around the sun. So while Earth is moving, we can only catch up to Mars every 26 months. And our rockets can only put us in the correct orbit and trajectory for us to have the correct entry and control around that time, And which is why we have launch windows. Gotcha. If we would have missed July 2020, we would have had to wait 26 months. And then it's also like, all right, what do we have all these engineers do for 26 months? We need to ask Congress for more, more money to support all these jobs. Um, which is not an easy thing you just do. Yeah. <laughs> um, Especially right now. <laughs> right. Um, so, so there's a lot of constraints, technical constraints. Again, the, the laws of physics. Yeah. It's really what it is. Um, so you have to work around them because at the end of the day, the laws of physics don't really care for us. So we have to learn how to use them. Let me ask you a question. I know I, I, I can <laughs> take it from you. <laughs> What's stopping us from sending a, an actual person to Mars? Why works, would you right? want to? To, well, I guess. I guess the, the people want, you know, people keep talking about our ecosystem and our planet dying. And like you said, it kind of gives people hope. And people kind of want that 
Well, I'm not saying I'm, maybe that's I'm speaking for you. I'm not wrong if I'm speaking for you, but people kind of want to know that we can achieve it and it can be Was habit- it a movement habitable. to move to Mars? People like I've heard. Who wants to move to Mars? I know there's people, like, crazy people. I don't know. You don't want to, <laughs> but they've said that. But it, did, did did you just hear what I just said? Let me ask you. We it takes eight months to get to Mars. No, I, I heard you, and, so, I, and so, I believe you. It's but, just so people don't re- recognize. So, so it's really exactly, easy exactly. to send a robot to Mars. Eight months. Imagine sitting yourself in a little capsule with however many people you've never met in your life, and you just befriended over the last few years because you had to out of your job. Now you're locked up in a little spaceship. You can't go anywhere um, on your way to Mars. And that's just part of it. Then you have to land on Mars. Landing on Mars is not easy. If it works, props to you. But out of all the missions that have landed, only a handful have actually been successful in See, landing. That's what I'm saying. I, I don't know that information. So and then, and then you get to Mars. What's on Mars? Nothing barren land right so you need to have a complete set of architectural like systematic gotcha. support for humans humans are fleshy and stupid like that's just the reality <laughs> yeah so they need to survive robots is arguably easier to get there not that it's easy but easier because you don't have to worry about feeding them um so there's a lot that goes into space exploration, and you can't just now say send people to Mars just because you want to. Gotcha. You, we, we are no longer in a place where we are willing to expend people's lives for the sake of just doing something. There's no – it was immoral in the first place when the Russians and the United States were doing that, and, and, and it still is today. Now I think we're more conscious of it. You don't want to just, just kill somebody for the sake of – developing some new tech it's like if you are going to send someone to mars they need to survive the tra- the, the trajectory the, the whole travel they need to survive once they get there and then on top of that you need to make sure they can come back this idea that you're just going to send people there at least for me that you're just going to send people there and expect them to die there is entirely immoral not okay yeah um and the fact that some people out there are just saying like oh yeah i'm willing to die are you sure gotcha it's just that they're misinformed. They don't know. I don't know if they're misinformed as much as they're not thinking full vision, right? Okay. I think uh, th- there will be a time where we will cross the stars. There will be times where we are going to have colonies throughout the planet. It's just going to take time, right? And this is it's, it's the long having enough vision to think of the future and preparing people for this future is something that we still need a lot of work on. Um, a lot of industries are going to be developed that we can't even imagine today. Uh, lots of jobs, right? There's a whole space economy that's barely getting started. And I don't think within our lifetime we're going to see colonies all over the place. We are going to see people get to Mars. I think before I die, people will get there. Um, but this is why I tell my family and my girlfriend, I'm like, yo, I, won't need, I need to live like two, <laughs> three hundred years, whatever it is. By the time I get 90, chop my head off and put me on a robot body. Like, I just want to keep going until I see this fully happen. <laughs> um, because it's going to take a long time. There's no way around it. Uh, the, 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 the economy, the economics of space right now are very difficult. It's really expensive to launch, even if, you know, companies have facilitated that over the, ne- over the last decade in particular. Um... But, but there's still a lot of work to go and a lot of people that are going to need to be trained for these jobs. This idea, I'm deviating, that universities and going to college is not a good idea, I think is the absolute stupidest message that's being passed around today. Um, because you need academics, you need technologists, you need people that can think of all of these very difficult problems and dedicate themselves to those problems. Mm-hmm. And there's no way around study. Like you just gotta go do it. Um, so so you just gotta have long vision, and, and and it's not an easy thing to do. People want a fucking rocket ship for tomorrow. Yeah. Sorry, that's just not how this works. We're not gonna kill people. Um, unless you're willing to kill people, then 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 that's maybe something you can live with. Some people may. Personally, I don't think that's okay. Yeah. Um, I think that's something important. I want actually wanted to highlight earlier. When you were interrupting me? <laughs> no, but no, but how he talked about how NASA's highlighting the people that work behind the scenes. 
And, and I think that's important, especially now because it's so easy to have access to all these things. For example, growing up, for us, engineering was not talked about. Sure. You know what I mean? Especially in our culture, you know, sure. in the Latino culture and the Latina, all that. It's not very popular. It's not a popular field. You're mostly taught to study and just, you know, go to work. Go to work. Go to work. So I think that's huge and that's important. Yeah, and I think it, it is it is very important to highlight. And I'm going to stick to the data of the United States because so that's what I know. Um, so the Hispanic population in the U.S. is minimally represented in the STEM field. I'm not just talking about engineers. I'm talking about the computer scientists. Uh, all, all of the STEM fields, you have... Out of the total jobs in the United States, you have something, I think it's like 20% of the jobs are considered STEM. And the Hispanic population, uh, the Hispanic population, actually, that, forget that previous figure, because I'm mixing up my numbers right now. The Hispanic population, I think, is something like 20% as of 2020 census. It's 20% of the total of the United States. Um, it's projected to reach about 50 in the 2050s. So, so we are, by, by all metrics, going to be uh, either half or the majority very soon. This is not far from now. And as of that same year, 2020 or 2021, uh, this is all data pu published by the federal government. I think it's like 8% of total STEM jobs are being held by Hispanic people to the 20% that are the total composition of the country. And if you start trending that all the way through the 2050s, that gap is enormous. Mm. And you are all well aware that engineers make good money. Like, let's just put it from that perspective. That money is not coming to us, <laughs> right? Um, the middle class is just not generally composed of your Hispanic or other non-white folks. Um, so it's, it is so critical and so crucial that we continuously feed these STEM opportunities. It doesn't have to be just engineering. There's so many ways to get involved um, to our people because it is a way out of poverty. It is a way out of, of what we call our own stereotypes. Um, and then we can start talking about building the vision of the future of space and everything else you want because we got to start thinking about all that now and the, our people can't stay out of it. Like it, it's just I, I wouldn't want that to happen. Um, it's going to be a big missed opportunity if the Hispanic population gets thrown to the side, even though we will be the majority in the 2050s, right? So organizations like the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineer that I'm a part of, that's what we do. We do a lot of outreach. Um, we go to schools. We tell kids, like, yo, you need to go to school. Don't listen to what these bogus billionaires are saying. Because guess what? They're billionaires. They went to school. And all of a sudden, they don't want you to go to school? Something funny about that. Um, so, yeah. Send more kids to school. Send more kids to study engineering. Boys and girls. Now, you said you grew up in, in New York, correct? I went to high school in New York City. Okay. It, 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 obviously, you're talking about... Um, having Hispanics know more about these opportunities so that we could grow, like you said, by the 2050s, we could have more parody. Hispanics. Parity is what it's called. Parity and representation okay. in STEM fields. Um, obviously, growing up here in, in Los Angeles, myself, we went to our school. There wasn't that many programs that... that STEM that wasn't was. a thing. Okay. Yeah, STEM wasn't even a thing. And not, now it's a program that's been, like, they kind of are pushing, but it wasn't even available. It wasn't even... But is it available now to no, a lot it of is. schools? To a lot, a lot of schools, yeah. They, 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 uh, there's more, is what I'll probably say. There's more. Gotcha. And I will have to say, like, I think one of the beauties of social media is the fact that now you get to see who's doing it. Mm -hmm. A lot of us are on there. Um, cool. Just showing, like, yo, hey, muchacho. Yeah, you can Saludos. do it. Saludos, you know, like, we're here. Yeah. Um, and you can do it, too. And I, I came from nothing, and look where I'm at now. Putting shit on Mars. Cool, man. <laughs> that's um, dope. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's that's one of the reasons we wanted to bring you on, actually, because we, we were talking about it, and growing up, like we said, we didn't have those opportunities. We didn't have that push or that means to know 
how to achieve that or get to that type of field. And for example, here in LA, man, it's like you got NASA JPL right up the street. Yeah. We should be seeing bus loads of kids there every single day. And we sure. do. I see them. Honestly, I don't see that many brown kids there. Yeah, it's not the, the it's not but the because community. a lot of sp- teachers don't even know, and it's like it's open to the public. You just have to yeah. set it up with time, and you can just bring students there. Um, and it's like yo, it's like right there. Like, don't just go to Disneyland. Like, go yeah. to NASA JPL. It's right there. Go show people real magic. You know, like the, the you know, there's you know a lot of crazy? cool stuff there. My son, um, he's into building stuff. Great. He. He has uh, the Legos, and then, but he has some bigger blocks. And he's always building, Dad, look at this spaceship. Dad, look yeah. at this is a, a robot with two. He, he puts guns on them, too. But, <laughs> Dude, I, I was building Gundams back in my day. Oh, like, he, you know what I mean? This little boy could build you different things. Yeah. And um, it's crazy because I bought him here. The first time I bought him here, I told him, look, we build robots here. And we were building uh, conveyor belts, right? I told them they were robot hands. But they are robots. Imagine if we, <laughs> imagine if we took them to to NASA. Yeah. That'll be like, his mind will be blown. Yeah. So you're right. Like, taking our kids there. It's just right there. And yeah. we, we all have that curiosity as kids. Yeah. The moon, you know I mean? Space, the moon, you know, other planets and things like that. But it's kind of pushing it forward as well. Keeping that dream alive, pushing it forward. Yeah, you don't stop being a kid. I think that's the beauty about STEM. I'm, mm. I'm, yeah. I think about this all the time. I'm just now a kid with money. Yeah, now I get to buy the toys. And you're actually sending shit up there, yeah? <laughs> now instead nice. of like going up here, it's like, no, it's actually now going up. my rocket. <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> you, know, you should start a YouTube channel. A what? A YouTube channel. Yeah. I know. Honestly, we're I talking. Will. We're talking about the content. <laughs> I will. Yeah, and then will. you can It'll incorporate happen. like... Um, Reviewing tech. Not even that, bro. I didn't, just talking I think, about yeah. the stuff. Yeah. And incorporating it with what you know and what yeah. you do. Just, just like us. We, I feel like a kid right now learning from a teacher. You know, he's, yeah. like, oh, no, he's just giving us a all lesson all on all kinds of things. Yeah. So, yeah. So, it's like it's just talking and people are interested. And like and you know what's crazy? He's younger than us. And we're learning from him a lot. Like, well, I mean, we never stop learning, bro. I mean, we learning. never stop learning. That's dope, man. Never stop learning. That's the beauty of life. Okay, I'm going to ask some dumb questions because I know... Here we go. This, no, this, this, ask away. Hey, hey, we this, this should be... This before we came back This live. should be a segment on its own for Mike's dumb question of the day. No, no, no. <laughs> Is it a stupid question <laughs> or not? Okay, well, I've been told, curiosity. I have been told on the podcast, I said, I'm going to ask you a dumb question. And our guest said, oh, there's no dumb question. There's no such thing as dumb question. There's no question. such thing as a dumb question. As soon as I asked, he said, that's a dumb question. That's all. <laughs> Feel free to tell me it's a dumb question. Uh, we were talking about this earlier, obviously. Um, aliens. People think of aliens or extraterrestrials as little green things, little or gray. big ass headed with big eyes. What do you believe in that? Tell us a little bit about what you think of that. And uh, do you think people are right and, oh, I, I got abducted by aliens and they look like this? And Listen, man, I don't know if they and got abducted. Uh, drugs are a hell of a thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also mental health. <laughs> um, so listen, right? Like, we don't have conclusive evidence of life elsewhere. That's what we're trying to do with these Mars missions. Trying to go bring back samples and figure out if those samples contain any any kind of evidence of ancient life on Mars. If we can confirm, which I think we will be able to have a definite answer um, within the next decade, if we can confirm that life independently happened on Mars, then your imagination is the limit as to what can happen outside of Earth and Mars because if that happened on Mars, what is there to tell you that Something more complex couldn't have happened on one of the many moons of Jupiter, somewhere outside of our planetary system that we don't know yet. Um, we have confirmed planets with water outside of Earth. Uh, that's what James Webb is doing. That's what a lot of these telescopes are doing. Telescope, yeah. Um, they're they're helping us confirm planets in what we call Goldilocks areas, um, habitable zones of solar systems uh, where water can exist. If we can confirm that life happened here and Mars independently, then, dude, who knows? The, the universe has existed for billions of years. It'd be very arrogant of us to think that we're the only things that ever happened. Cool. Okay. 
Quick question. <laughs> uh, just answer. All you got to do is answer. Uh, yes or no, if you believe in it. Roswell. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, right? The, I know Roswell. The Roswell crash. Listen, man. There's nothing telling us that that just wasn't an experimental aircraft. Cool. Wait, what happened? You don't know what the Roswell crash? Area 51. No. no, no, no I'm no, sorry. No, 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 no I'm sorry. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Area 51 is Yeah, you're right. Sorry. <laughs> I'm done with my next one. Though. Area 51. Is it real or not? Yeah, I mean, there's evidence that it is. What happens but, here, I don't know, but it's just okay. technology. The way I see it is it's just, again, top secret military base. What's happening there? I can't tell you. Roswell, I can't tell you what that was. But I think we got to give credit to humans because just because we're seeing something that we can't understand doesn't mean it's alien. Humans are smart as hell. And we've been developing insane tech for a while now. To put things into perspective, right? We just started flying airplanes. When was it? In the, in the early 1900s. 60 years later, we landed on the moon. Now we're landing things on Mars relatively routinely. We can do some crazy shit. I think it's it, it it's a disservice to our human intelligence to think that the stuff that has crashed or whatever is alien. Gotcha. Um, because humans are smart. Right. Little... You're, you're done with your random questions? Are you still or your dumb questions? Or? Yeah, I'm done with my dumb questions. <laughs> <laughs> are you? Well, I mean, I, I got a question. <laughs> here's a random comment now for people What's out up? there that believe like the moon landing was staged and fake. Here's your evidence right here, man. He just tells you how everything works and. <laughs> hey, peop, the the moon landing, that's that's one in particular that truly pisses me off because if you just go to one of these star parties that I'm talking about. Um and if you really want to, there's these retro reflectors that the astronauts left there so that you can basically point a laser at it and then if you have a sensor on Earth, the laser bounces back and it's like, "Oh yeah, I'm hitting the retro reflector that the astronauts <laughs> live left there." Okay. So it is yeah, there was people there. <laughs> it's, it's like basic experiments that people can do if you just know about them. And that should be enough to tell you. They left something Literally, reflective on, on, on there's the moon. A, there, the, there, there are astronauts left uh, an array of retro reflectors, which is basically, think of them as mirrors. Okay. And if you know exactly where they are, which is it's all public, you can set up an experiment. It's not too easy to make. But you can set up an experiment that tracks the moon and the motion of the moon relative to where you're standing. You can shoot the laser at exactly that point where it is, and the laser will bounce back, and you'll be like, oh, yeah. Like, well, what happened to that lag you were talking about? That's, that's for Morse. That's uh, a signal. There is a lag, though. Good point. There, there is. There is the well, th there is. <laughs> no, no. Well, <laughs> yes, there is. <laughs> there is not only. I mean, it's not too far away, but there is a certain lag, right? Like, speed of light is a thing. Um, that's why I said there are some mathematical constraints okay. and, and, and technical things you have to consider when putting this experiment together. But you can do it. It's accessible. And I'm sure someone out there has built this and put it out on GitHub or wherever. You can just buy the parts and build it yourself. Um, but that's like the quick, like, literally, literal pointer that astronauts are on the moon but and, and here's another thing too that a lot of people are always just like the counter argument then is just like why haven't we gone back and i'm like why should we like why did we go in the first place this it, context and history matters right which is why it's like the technical stuff the the technical stuff matters but also like the history and this is why can't can't stay out of school kids um all this stuff matters why did we go in the first place it was just tell the Russians that we had a bigger dick than them. It was an arms race, yeah? That's true. Yeah. It, it was just because the Russians were, they beat us to everything. The Russians beat the United States to everything. They got to space first. They put the first animal in space, the first human in space. Uh, they beat us to absolutely everything. Except the moon. The moon human landed. Right, it, because once we prove that we can do that, that basically told them we can build a nuke on the moon if we really wanted to and shoot you whenever we wanted to. That's really what that was all about. You know about that. um, That's the Cold War. The Cold War. People were terrified in the 50s because race, yeah? Sputnik got to space. It's like, 
The Russians put a satellite in space and we can't even get there. What the hell is that thing doing? We didn't get to that level of technology until years later when we put uh, Explorer 1 in space out of J JPL, um, which had a scientific instrument. And then we were like, okay, from there on, we were able to get to space. But the Russians beat us. And then the only reason we got to the moon was, again, the United States population needed some kind of moral uplift because everybody was terrified of what the Russians could do at the time. That's Cold true. War. Um, a lot of collaboration happened between the two nations in decades following that. Um, but but this is why history matters. It's like and we and we didn't go back because also it's very expensive. A lot of money was being thrown into that program. Um, and uh, we couldn't. There was no economic reason to go back. So at, at the end of the day, that's that's the absolute truth. Well, I mean, there's nothing out there for us at this point. You know what I mean? Like, we learned what we needed to learn from the mm -hmm. moon at that time, yeah. right? So now the moon is going to be in the next few years super important because it will become a commercial base. Everything that will happen beyond the Earth moon system it's way easier to launch from the moon yeah um it's way easier to experiment with humans in space just going to the moon and just living there and seeing what happens to our bodies develop technology to support life outside of earth there because it's relatively close um and and commercial enterprise will truly kick off the space economy once we establish a moon uh, a base there so so if we were to establish a base there before the russians do, is it like land? Like, you know how back then it's like, oh, we conquered this, like this is ours? Would we would we allow the Russians to land on the moon as would well? It be, would it be U.S. territory? Yeah. I actually know, and there's some legal treaties about this. The moon is not, no one country can claim it. Because um, there's a lot of collaboration between, like, countries, especially when it comes to space exploration yeah. and, and things like that, so. Yeah, and um, there are some limits to that nowadays. Uh, especially with the Chinese in particular, just because the Chinese space agency, and, and again, history and context matters. The Chinese space agency is part of their military, um, hence why NASA can't work with them, mm. because we are a civil agency. Gotcha. Uh, they are literally part of their military, so there, there's no way we can exchange any tech, any knowledge, which is garbage and unfortunately a disservice to humanity, in my opinion. Um, but other countries collaborate, and the, the moon base will be uh, a whole international effort. And it makes sense because it's one of those places where all countries will benefit from having a shared space that then we can all go do our respective science, tech development, etc. That's crazy. That's crazy how they, 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 uh, countries can't just fucking unite to do this from here. You have to have that military aspect, and it's always because of, the, like you said, the history of politics. And yeah, people trying to conquer areas or being <laughs> having bigger dicks. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. right, like right now, Russia, China, and U.S. Who's right, they're all trying to have bigger dicks. Hey, but this stuff affects our day to day. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. our day to day space exploration too. To put things into perspective, up until very recently, the European Space Agency, in collaboration with the Russian agency, were going to deliver the Mars sample return rover. Russia decided to fuck up, and that got scratched off. Mm. And we had to completely redesign the architecture of the mission to return these samples. They were going to be part of this, um, this whole science campaign to bring back samples from Mars. But after that whole, after what's still going on with the Ukraine conflicts today, it's like, this is not going to happen. We're cutting ties. Um, so stuff, it does affect it does affect day to day science exploration that benefits all of humanity. Sucks, huh? Like yeah. division even affects that. Like you know, like improvements. We're talking and about always being divided. Yeah. Like yeah. There, there's always a divide in in humans. Like whether it's not just here, but church, in space. <laughs> yeah. Space, like anyway, belief, like anything. Like there's always separation in humanity, and that's what keeps us from moving forward. Yep. It's Unfortunately. Crazy. Um. Man, that's crazy. We talked about a lot about 
a lot of what you're doing is fucking amazing. There's a lot of shit that, I, again, we could continue going on. And I kind, on I kind of want to ask a random question now. <laughs> now it's my turn. <laughs> no, but, you know, obviously you're talking about, you know, Hispanics and not being represented in, in STEM. Yeah. Have you had any hardships or have you had any, like, pushback from family, from friends, or from things or not being supported in your field or any, like, you know, kind of separation where you're kind of looked down upon or not seen as an equal? I don't think directly. Um, so there, there are several points to that question. I think from, from a family and friendship perspective, I've never felt that I've had anybody push me down. And I think I want to talk about that later too. I've surrounded myself by a supportive circle from the get go. I, I've, I've had a chosen family. I've had no choice than to build a chosen family. Uh, every time I've moved and I've had friends now that I've had for 15, 20 years, even, um, that are my core support. And that is critical in my success. If anybody tells you they've done anything by themselves, it's absolute bullshit. Um, I, I, I have been extremely lucky. And also, at the same time, I've worked for this. I am very careful as to who's in my circle. Um, and it's been support and nothing other than support. Because I like to say I'm the dumb one in my friend group. Right? Believe it or not. <laughs> I have my friends getting PhDs, MBAs. Uh, the Harvards, the MITs, the Urbana-Champagne, uh, the, the, the top academic institutions of the country. I have friends everywhere because we've all, we all started somewhere and we've all are, we're all doing crazy things. And, and this is my circle, and I'm very proud of that. Um, so I've had incredible support. Even though within my family, yeah, I've been the black sheep to a certain extent. But also, I have to admit, my mom studied a ton to be a teacher. She was an academic herself. She had a 30 plus career year career as a teacher. I saw her work uh, a lot and, and, and that was instilled very early on. So I've had examples. I don't have to look too far um, for examples. And that's something, despite my lack of resources, something that I've always really cherished. Um, and at work, I don't think I've ever had anybody directly uh, uh, tell me something because I'm Hispanic. Yes, I've been the non-white, the only non-white person in the room many times. Um, that has happened, and, and I don't take that lightly. I know for a fact there are cultural differences that I'm conscious of that people aren't. And when someone, and this is something I have to question, for example, if someone tells me, you're too much of a contrarian or you're too passionate, I have to question myself and be like, would they ask me the same thing or tell me the same, give me the same feedback if I was a white person? Mm. And then not take it too personally. Because <laughs> um, otherwise it obviously gets to my head. I'm like, oh, am I being a piece of shit today? Like, was, or was I within reason? Then I have to be like, oh, wait, no, 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 no. What I said was absolutely valid. They're just not culturally intelligent and that's not on me. Um, and, and honestly, just move on. I'm not going to take my time to educate them. That's not my problem. Sorry, but I have my career to build and I have shit to do. I'm not going to take the time to educate a non-white person unless they truly want to sit down with me. Um, or a white person, um, unless they want to sit down with me. So, so it doesn't directly, I, I don't think I've ever been directly affected, but these are things I think about, <laughs> um, when, when I have interactions day to day. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it happens with me. You know, I've, I've talked about it before, even with some of my cousins. They're like, oh, you know, he does, he has his own business. He's an engineering and he's in this and that. And it's like indirectly like talking shit, I guess you can say, not being supportive. And, and it kind of sucks in, in our culture that it's like that. So yeah. that's why I wanted to ask you because it's, I mean, what you're doing, you know, it's great. And I can only imagine how, how much support. And Dude, but it's like, but then also get. it's like, I, I know like the DS and everybody's like, oh, they have, they have their... <laughs> Yeah. They have their guy at NASA. It's like, bro, I know y'all are juicing it a little bit too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Huh? Uh, I never thought about it that way. That's true. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, so I, I know it too. Sometimes so, I'm like, Mi sobrino? No, si trabaja para NASA. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. You know, it's like. <laughs> uh, but I've been very fortunate that I've had a lot of support. And that's great. Right. Actually, so, you know, that's one of the things we learn as we get older. Surrounding ourselves with supportive people and close-knit group of friends that are going to be there for you and support you at the same time. Yeah, and, and knowing when to tell some of them to fuck off. <laughs> yeah, It's very important. And I, I, I love being blunt about this because at, at the end of the day, 
you have to make that decision yourself. And, and I think it, it oftentimes is against our culture, but it, it's one of those things about breaking cycles that you have to learn how to sometimes even push back family. That may not be the best for you. Um, you have to move away from the toxicity. It's just what you got to do to put yourself and yours in a good place. And it's a difficult thing to do, um, but you got to do it. Like Otherwise, they be, will become a burden that's not your problem. Generational yeah. trauma. Um, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And it's it's the only way sometimes to, to be able to... There's only so much help you can give, I think. Um, also, like, I've learned, and some people may like this or not, but I've, I've learned to not give uh, help where it's not requested. Right? I think that's very important because otherwise I'm not going to do you any benefit unless you actually want my help. That's true. Um, and it's all these things that I know are, are learned from from the culture that you got to work around, man. Cool. Well, it's, it seems like you, uh, you know, you're very young, and you have your your head on your shoulders, and obviously you're working you're on at. it, man. It may seem like <laughs> I do, but I'm working on it. <laughs> that was dope. Where do you see yourself in the future? Like, what do you what do you want to be? What do you want to not be? Because you already are. <laughs> but what do you want to do? Like, like uh, what's next? You, yeah, what's next? Do you see yourself maybe leading NASA and 15, 20 years? I won't or? be able to do that because I don't have a PhD. Um, at least for now. That doesn't actually stop anything, but I don't think that's where I want to be. Okay. I don't know, actually. That's that's one of the many places I will be in public office at some point in my life. Hmm. When will that happen? I don't know. To what degree? I don't know. I unfortunately cannot be president because I was not born here. Uh, but my kids may be a different story, and that's the kind cool. of mentality they're going to have. Uh, I was, bro, that was a conspiracy. Really that was a conspiracy, too. <laughs> That was, bro. That, that that was a Trump conspiracy. Yeah. <laughs> Maniac. <laughs> um, uh, so, but I will I serve in public office? Yes. Will I stay in industry for a while? Yes. There's an aspect again of economics that I think is super important, and we do at the end of the day live in a capitalist system, mm -hmm. um, and that is my next uh, barrier to enter. Cool. Yeah. What cool. will I do with that? We'll see. So before we move on to our no manches, um, you have a book coming out. I do. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I know you're talking about your media group as well, yeah. Mars Media as well. So, um, Yes, yeah, so I will be launching my book in early 2023 uh, with HarperCollins, um, the, the, the Boy Who Reached for the Stars. It is a memoir, so it has a lot more details of my entire trajectory to, to Mars, if you will. Um, and I, I, I never thought I would be writing a memoir at 29. It's just like, yeah. <laughs> there's no way. Um, something maybe in my 50s, 60s. But then the, the way it was pitched to me, and, and then I, you know, I agreed with the idea. It's just like, why should I wait until then to talk about my struggles now that I'm going through now or very recently, right? It's like, I'm only 10 years, when I put it this way, 10, 11 years out of high school. Like, I, I can still talk to, to kids right now and be like, yo, 10 years is all it took. Look where I'm at now. Mm -hmm. And I was just in your shoes not that long ago, right? And, and, and the value of telling your story and sharing it is, first of all, what, what landed these, this opportunity is because I, I do a lot of outreach um, wherever I can. And, and, you know, a lot of people uh, think I post everything to social media, but I don't. It's just like I, social media is a lot of work. But, but I am out there. I'm in schools. I'll go talk to a teacher during the pandemic. It was awesome just launching up a Zoom meeting or whatever, and, and we were just having talks all over the place. And, and some of that got to some people, and the opportunity to write it, write my story in, in a book kind of came about. And I'm excited to, to share the story, both in English and in Spanish. And uh, I hope that it just, it, if I just know one kid gets inspired to be an engineer, then I've done my job. Um, but that's that's kind of the goal with, with sharing the story. Dope. Let's go. When does it come out? Uh, early 2023. Okay. So I think around April, but we're working those details. No, this is an adult, uh, maybe like teenager, young adult audience. Okay. You're also talking about uh, making children's books as well, right? Yes, that is a, that I, I will be doing children's book. That's a separate project, working the details. But the, more, more to come, follow me on my social, uh, primarily oh. Instagram. The Space Mechanic is my handle. Um, and and we'll be launching from there different okay. ideas. Yeah. And also, I mean, I mean, this isn't my project, uh, but 
I have a Disney movie now. Oh shit! <laughs> uh, what? Pixar just released is gonna release Elio. I don't know if you saw that. No, uh, that's based on you. No, it's not. <laughs> I don't conspiracies. <laughs> I don't know. They saw the story uh, and then they ran with it. But I thought it was really cool. Uh, there's my name's just gonna be out there as a little Pixar character. But no, no, it has nothing to do with me. But, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, but I was just like. Looks like me, this kid, <laughs> um, which I think is really cool. But no, no, nothing to do with me. I just like to joke. <laughs> nice. Cool, cool. Hey, congrats on all that, man. I mean, I wish our head was on our shoulders back in, back oh, at your yeah. age, man. You know, so. Hey, I mean, man, I'm still give yourself out. credit. You know, whatever happened yep. in your life is what got you to where you exactly. are today. So um, you, you've learned a ton throughout exactly. whatever it was. And we never stop learning, like we said earlier. So Never yeah. stop learning, man. That's That's for sure. Cool. So I want to jump to No Manches? Yeah. So No Manches, again, it's a segment where we bring out like a pet peeve or something that you're like, 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 you heard No Mames, right? You heard that term? No Jodas. No Mames. No Jodas. <laughs> same shit. Same, same, same exact uh, thing. So usually we bring out something that each of us consider a No Jodas, No Mames. Or No Manches, we like to call it No Manches. Sure, I got a good one. You know, it's when people like ask you about Roswell. <laughs> or, or, or Area 51 or, that's fucked up <laughs> I was asking for the people <laughs> he's the man of the people eh? I was asking uh, for the people <laughs> oh yeah that one's okay good. that's dumb oh, so, alright so he's so he kind of threw out a conspiracy so my no manches we talked about it earlier and I kind of brought it up <laughs> my no manches is the conspiracy people that think that the moon landing was staged in the in a studio in Burbank, and that it never existed. It's like, come on. Point you a laser to the moon. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Point a laser to the moon, and you'll find out. But, it, <laughs> but it's just ridiculous, you know, like all the technology we have now. To question it back then, maybe, I understand it. Now, like, we're more informed. Like you said, NASA's public. Like, you can yeah, see all the projects, public. and you can see everything. And it's like, how can you still go around believing that? Or the flat Earth theory as well. So, Do, do you think that... that there's technology out there that is being held back because maybe almost definitely experimental. That, yeah, or governments think that we're not there Dude, yet. Okay, first of all, y'all give governments too much credit. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say more because it'll disappear. <laughs> no, but like if people, one of the things about conspiracies is like it takes a lot of people to stay quiet. Bro, have you ever been in a group of people that have yeah. somebody's kept a secret? Hey, but no. that's why we're underrepresented. That's why we're only like eight percent of the of the STEM field because <laughs> we but, got the cheese no, going. At the end of the day, any tech that you have, yeah, there's commercial enterprise that they have to. Man, like for example, I like iPhones are like iPhones are just catching up in terms of camera performance with Samsung, for example. But but why would they release anything better? That's true. People Keep are still thing. buying their shit. The consumer yeah. keeps wanting, wanting, yeah, wanting. Yeah, so it's like, no, there's no conspiracy. It's it's capitalism. You as a consumer have the power to buy or not. Um, whatever you want. You fall into the hole of like, oh, I want the next big thing. Gotcha. Without asking yourself why. Um, and looking into the details, and it's just at the end of the day, companies don't need to release tech people won't buy, or if someone's willing to buy something lesser, why would they release something better? Like, it, it's economics, right? right? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, y'all give government too much credit. It's true. true. There's no one out there. There's no group, no single group of people that are just, like, controlling everything. It's just, like, <laughs> the world is too chaotic. As much as I would, I would love to tell you that there were 10 people in the world that we're organizing everything, the world is too chaotic. Yeah. Gotcha. Most definitely. I mean, it's fucking chaotic here, <laughs> Like, trying to control everything, like... Yeah. 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 And, I, and and watch, you're going to see in the comments, oh, it's just because he's from NASA, he's saying these things. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, know, I know one industry that's trying to control fucking... Media? Things. No, no, no. This is my no manches. Oh. <laughs> this is my no manches. Let's hear it, let's hear it. So I fucking went, you know, I, I go to stores, right? I went to Home Depot. I, go to, I went to Target and Walmart over the last week. We're in October, right? The Halloween stuff. To me, Halloween is my favorite holiday. Even though it's not Yo, a holiday. My girlfriend just set up the house. Damn. <laughs> the whole thing. Yeah, Halloween, <laughs> especially October. I told you, I already love fall. Fall is my favorite season. October is my favorite month. And Halloween. Oh, so you're the pumpkin spice latte. No, no, check it out. <laughs> Starbucks guy with the Why extra. The fuck? He's the sopero guy. <laughs> Why the fuck are they putting Christmas shit out? <laughs> Already, that's my no manches. You walked in, I walked into Cone Depot, and all I'm hearing is Christmas songs. 
and the fucking big Santa. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> I'm out. like, what the fuck? It's because you're out in Redlands. Who Costco, no, Costco. go anywhere. They have the fucking Christmas lights. It's not even fucking November. <laughs> At this Home Depot here, they don't have it yet. So. Bro, I'm telling hey, you. Hey, but I if you buy them now, you go right now, now. if you buy them now, up, it'll be cheaper than buying them then. Yeah, he's got a plan. Buy them now, it's cheaper than later. No, they're they're already selling at premium. <laughs> but no much is wait till fucking I feel December. That, I feel that, I feel or at least till Thanksgiving. You know yeah, what I'm that's saying? That's when they go out the kind of, yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't want to hear Christmas music in fucking in Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's my no matches. So yeah. anyways. I got you. And you, you got you you said you're no matches at the beginning, right? You called me out. A real one, dude. A real one. Uh, I mean, that one's real. Uh, <laughs> you know, even on my way here, it's just like people, fucking drivers that don't have blinkers, that don't <laughs> use their blinkers, dude. I knew it was going there. <laughs> Bro, it's just, and just in general, something I've experienced here, in, in just in general with LA drivers, there's a lack of cordiality. It's just like, why do you have to be ahead of me? You know, even like when we're when we're you know on, on the freeway, and someone's about to merge, and you know, like in my head, there's like a clear pattern of cars. There's like the one that's ahead. I follow. You follow. Why is there's always a fucking asshole that <laughs> wants to just get ahead of me? And it's like, where are you going? Like you're just going one hey, spot ahead of me. At the stoplight, well, yeah, yeah, I hate yeah. that one too. Dude, and it's like, just I think there's a lack of cordiality. It's like people are just so engulfed in their own freaking lives. Where were you coming from? Because I was, it wasn't you the one that passed. I'm coming bro, from Relic. It's just ego, bro. I think that's what it is. It's bigger dick syndrome. Bigger dick syndrome. But it's also just like, why can't people just be nice? Dude? Yeah. Mm, it's like the blinkers aren't just because, like, oh, because you got to do it. It's because, like, it's courtesy. You're, you're, you're telling someone you're going to go somewhere so that they don't fucking crash into you and they can drive around you. And it's just like, I'm going to tell even, it's just like, also, que te cuesta, carajo? Just like. Yeah. yeah. It, like, <laughs> it happened to me, actually, uh, coming over here, too. Yeah. Uh, I, t- I was making a left, you know, the arrow Who you to turn left? Street? No, but when I was coming back from oh. L.A. So I was uh, I was going to Saul's house to pick him up. So I turned left, and then right after they turned left, they were pulling into a gas station, making a right right away. No signal. So I had to, like, slam my brakes, and it's like, oh, come on, are you kidding me? Like, you turn left right away, and then you're turning right with no signal. It's like, I get it. Yeah. So I get it. And I've been guilty of it, so now I'm going to try to change my habit. <laughs> change, change, it's like just change your mentality. You're not just doing it because you got to follow rules. It's like you're just being nice to people. Yeah. yeah. That's true. You want to want the... Words of wisdom? Words of wisdom? Words of wisdom. Okay, so words of wisdom, again, is where... You uh, tell us a little bit about how, what you live by. Any words of wisdom that that you want our public and the people that follow you to know um, that they can live by as well. Yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a really strong believer in el dicho of like dime con quién anda y te diré quién eres. Um, right, like tell me who you are. Tell me who you are surrounded by, and I'll tell you who you are. Uh, th- that circle, that immediate circle, does truly influence your life in every single pathway that you can take. Uh, it's so important to keep that circle close and keep them, uh, you know, tailored in a certain way, like make sure that there's no toxicity in that circle. Um, and if there is, it's also okay to, to, to push back from some of those people and come back to them later. Um, and, and not only, do you take from that circle, but how do you contribute to that circle too? It's how, how do you help those that are so important to you? Um, it, it does matter a lot. Uh, you get inspiration from the people around you. Those people should also be able to call you out on your shit. Uh, it's very important to have people that are real with you and honest, and you're not just in a circle of folks that you just yell and hear yourself back um, because y- you need correction oftentimes. So I think that keep, keeping that circle um, and taking care of that circle is very important. Gotcha. Nice. Yeah, I agree with that. That's, that's definitely true. Well said. Yeah. Cool. Exactly. So can you tell everybody where they can find you on your socials? I know you talked about your Instagram and your – you have any other thing besides Instagram? 
Uh, primarily, that's that's my main. I'm supposed to be on the YouTube, on the TikTok, <laughs> uh, and I will. Uh, but for now, Instagram is kind of my main uh, at the Space Mechanic, where where I post a ton, and you'll you'll see some growth from there too. Nice, cool. nice. Sounds good. Well, we want to thank you. Thank you for coming out here. Yeah, thanks. Giving us uh, the space lessons and <laughs> answering Mike's hey, dumb questions. You know, it's, it's kind of like, it makes me think, right? Like, if I just had some kind of place where it's just like space and beers that I can just like share these kind of stories. Hey. It's like I know that kids aren't the only ones interested in this stuff, right? Hey. It's just like, hey. That's hey. what I was going to say, space, space and, and beers. beers. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? This goes to show that, you know, space and science and engineering can be fun. This guy's drinking a beer. <laughs> <laughs> So <laughs> it's not all glasses and nerdy. You know, everybody it's thinks not, lab coats man. and. It's not. It's not. We are cool as hell. <laughs> <laughs> and we party if you tell us we're party. That's for sure. <laughs> space parties too, so. <laughs> hey, no joke. I recently partied underneath the space shuttle. Oh, really? Oh, shit. At the California Science Center. They have that every year. So, yes, huh. we party in places nice. out of this world. We got to go to Ch Joshua Tree and set up one. Uh -huh. Go to space while you're at Joshua Tree? <laughs> well, that's that's completely different. <laughs> we got you. <laughs> well, thank you again. Um, hey, thanks for having me, man. Guys, this book comes out like like he said early, twenty twenty three. Look out for it. Uh, follow him. There's a ton of questions that I want to continue to ask, but unfortunately, we ran out of time. Um, I'm sure that if you hit him up, he won't mind responding to you guys. Just don't ask them questions. <laughs> that's his pet peeve. Um, but anyways, thank Ask you. Them again. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you for coming, and we hope to hopefully have you in the future again. Yeah. Um, and we want to wish you luck on your endeavors. Hey, thank you guys for having me. This is fun. Okay. Thanks. All right, everybody. This is great work y'all are doing, by the way. This is cool stuff. Oh, oh, thank you. Appreciate that. Cool. Yeah. We're just kind of like you, man. We're just learning as we go, learning from people every time we talk to them, and that's yeah. what it's about. The art of conversation. So cool. Thank you. Thanks again, everybody. Uh, we'll see you next time. Get ready for second season. This, we're wrapping it up. We've got a lot of good stuff coming. Um, thank you, okay? Yeah. Do you want to And something he talked about earlier that I kind of want to start saying, just be kind, be human. All right. Peace out, everybody. <laughs>